Gary Bowden and welcome to another Zara TV tutorial of ZaraZone.com. Pretty cheesy optical illusion, huh? Well, this month I have an optical illusion for you that's going to knock your socks off. Friend and fellow moderator Rick Donna brought to my attention something online that is a really cool effect and it looks as though it would take ages to do. Through our collaboration we were able to map the thing out in Zara so that you can do it this month. This scene looks as though it might be 3D, and yes, the scissors are a 3D model, but the paper looks just as dimensional. However, as you can see, it's made up of simple Zara shapes. So this month, let's say we play rock, paper, scissors. I forgot the rock. Just a moment. To begin this month, go to zarazone.com forward slash tutorials. Scroll down the page, click on the downloads button to download this month's zip archive, unpack it on your system, and get ready to load it in Zara. What you'll be doing this month is based on a physical principle. Suppose you had a shard of paper and made a slit down the center and curled the side down. That shadow would help represent a character. I'm going to do a little backstory now. Melton Glazer, probably one of the top 10 designers in New York City for the past half century, created this typeface. Now to take this one step further, this wonderful effect, Mario Hugo took the basic shape of this for Wired Magazine to create a new logo, and as you can see, it looks like paper crafting work. It looks as though it's very dimensional and little pieces have been chopped out to make the character legible. To get this story to its logical conclusion, Rick Dada discovered the Photoshop Roadmap blog written by Enrique Flore, where Enrique went through a lot of different steps in Photoshop to achieve the effect that Mario Hugo had done, based on the original typeface by Milton Glaser. Well, we're going to show you now how to create this exact effect in Zara. I'd like you to open now the Spotlight on Background Zara document, as well as this Papercraft alphabet. Now, these are grouped shapes, and they have little red lines in them, and you're going to use them for guides later. We're going to spell the word papyrus, so we need to select P, hold shift with the selector tool and select A, then uh, Y, R, U, and S, and what we're going to do is copy them and then paste them into this spotlight background. The direction of light is important here. It's coming from upper right because the letters are going to have the same kind of shadow. Now one of the things when you pick an ellipse uh, fill is, and this applies to the lettering that you're going to do, is you can add control points for additional colors just by double clicking on the control line. And with the color editor choose different colors and you can also move the points around to increase and decrease contrast. And what I'd like you to do now is to press Control V to get the characters into the document. Press Control Shift L to get the uh, object alignment going. And I want you to align them horizontally to the bottom. Now, each and every character is not going to be perfectly aligned with each other because those little red guidelines are uh, sticking uh, below some more than others. But drag a guideline down to where most of the characters align with the bottom. Hold control and with the selector tool drag the P over to the left. Let's drag the A down a little bit so it looks aligned. The R has to go down a little bit too and we're going to move it to the right by holding control to constrain the uh, horizontal alignment. Let's drop a copy of the P by right clicking and then releasing the mouse button once it's selected. The Y can go over here by holding control. The S needs to go over a little bit so we can make room for the R or holding control to constrain the movement. There's the U and uh, finally I think we can use our nudge keys to get that a little more perfectly aligned and then bring the S over. And we have the word papyrus and because I duplicated that P we can delete it now. Select all the characters now and then scale them up using a corner control handle until they look good in the page like this. And we're just about ready to rock and roll with this uh, 3D paper crafting. Now before getting to the actual tutorial I'm going to take you through a dry run. We've got what's going to become the letter A. It has a conic fill. The start handle is a darker orange and the top handle is uh, white. I want you to clone this by pressing Ctrl K. 
And what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, use one of the pen tools to subtract part of this clone to reveal the bottom shape. So we go like this. Uh, we start at the lightest point of this uh, conical gradient, then go down to the darkest point. And once we have that shape, we select both. And I've got the uh, subtract shapes on uh, my toolbar here. And so we've got almost white at the top, and we've got a shade that does not butt up with the uh, brown on the underneath. So what we use is the uh, eyedropper tool to set the star point so that it looks correct and it blends in with the bottom object. Now, once I've removed the outlines, I think what we have here is a very good working model of what it is you're going to do. And this is me finessing. And this is me also changing colors. And you can do this if you click on the start point, click on the end point, and each time use the color editor or the eyedropper tool, as I'm doing right here, to blend those shades in perfectly. Now, you can't get this with the uh, conical tool by itself. So Rick's invention was to use two objects. What you're seeing here are the intermediate control points on the bottommost object, and don't freak about these hexadecimal codes because they're in the background object shape, and all you have to do is copy them and paste them into the color editor to reassign them. This is the top shape. So when you create a control point, what you want to do is to copy that code from the document and then paste it into the uh, hexadecimal field. Now I'm adding a Mr. Sun here because I want to show you the lighting direction. The spotlight is going from right top to uh, down left and that object supports it. It looks as though that piece is uh, folding underneath. So once you have both pieces together, this is basically what the uh, two conic fill uh, control points are going to look like in this document. Of course, you're not going to have outlines around the pieces, but you get the theory now. So uh, let's begin with the finished composition. We've got the P, and uh, what I want you to do is to uh, trace around to create that second shape, and you could of course clone it and then subtract it, but this is just going quicker. And what I'm doing is subtracting all the colors from that color gradient um, due to the fact that uh, those colors are wrong. So what I'm going to do is to go back to conical fill. And uh, I'm going to cheap out on you now. I'm not going to do the uh, entire intermediate colors. But as you can see, I'm moving the uh, end point over to where it uh, begins to overlap the bottom shape. OK, and that's looking pretty darn good there. Uh, the white, I have a problem with pure white, um, and I'm just adjusting this a little bit. The uh, star point probably shouldn't be pure white, uh, because pure white doesn't exist in nature. So just give it a little bit of a peach tint, and uh, we can move on to the A now. And I'm doing almost exactly what I did before in the uh, anatomy of this effect. Now, here's the big time saver point. Select the P, the first object, and copy that group. Then select the bottom object of the A and press Control shift a to copy the attributes. Yes, you're going to need to reposition the conic fill from the center, and I'm moving it around a little bit. We copy the top object and then Control shift a to paste that onto the upper object of the uh, second character here. Move the center around a little bit. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm uh, doing a little refining here. Control shift a gets you that uh, same complex color arrangement that you may have decided on uh, investing in, in the P. You can move the center uh, control handle to change the center. And what I'm doing is uh, using the eyedropper tool on the color editor to match that. Now that you've got the P and the A done, I'm going to skip ahead and let's say we have the word papyrus mapped out. That looks pretty good. What I want you to do is to select the upper and lower shapes of all these characters because we're going to do something neat with them in a moment. 
and we want we we don't want twenty seven thousand characters. We only want the uh, seven that you've created here. So you might want to hit pause on YouTube. Our next step is to uh, select the uh, entire grouped objects and select the shadow tool. Now look above at the magnified view, create the drop shadow and then a glow shadow and that will immediately get you a uh, dark shape surrounding them. Increase the transparency, increase the blur. I think the blur can go up a little bit higher so you can type a value which was 65 in there and if you're real careful with the, with the uh, shadow tool you can pull on that shadow and make it a little bit bigger. Now we don't want black because black isn't really a color theme in this composition so what I'm doing is I'm creating a uh, dark brown for the shadows for the characters and uh, we zoomed out and that looks pretty good. One final thing you might want to do uh, to imitate a uh, paper crafting kind of a scrapbook thing is to overlap the characters a little bit. Now that they have uh, shadows around them as you can see they, they really bring out the dimension in what it is you're doing. This effect now uh, this view yeah okay that should probably go there and the uh, final S, let's press Control shift f to move that up to the front because that makes a better composition. Now that you've got your papyrus drawing, I think uh, you've learned a lot about 3D without actually using a 3D program. I hope you've enjoyed your paper crafting and I'll see you next month on 